Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top five reasons why your trash compactor won't start. Stick around to the end of the video for some important safety tips you won't want to miss. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. The first thing to check is the power supply. Trash compactors need a full 120 volts to work properly. If your trash compactor won't start, it may not be getting power. First, you want to look at the circuit breaker to be sure it hasn't tripped. Even if it doesn't look like it's tripped, we're going to reset it just to be sure. Once you have it reset, then we can check the wall socket with a multimeter set to volts AC. All you have to do is stick a probe into each side of the socket and check the meter. It should read 120 volts. Keep in mind that the number can fluctuate up or down by 10%. If the socket doesn't have proper voltage, then either it or the circuit breaker may need to be replaced. Next, we can look at the on-off rotary switch. It's what you use to turn the trash compactor on and off. The on-off rotary switch is a small switch that you turn with the removable knob. Some are sold with the knob, and some are sold with just the switch. It's located on the control panel. If your trash compactor won't start, it could be that the contacts inside the switch have failed. In order to test it, you'll have to open up the console for access. Once you have access to the switch, we can use a multimeter to test for continuity. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we have to test it with a multimeter set to continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. If you look at the wiring diagram for our example, you'll see that there's a wire for the incoming power, which is tan with a red stripe, one for on, which is violet, and one for start, which is yellow. Remove the wires from the terminals, and then we have to do two tests. First, we'll attach a probe to the tan wire's incoming power terminal, and the other probe to the violet wire's on terminal, and turn the switch to the on position. It should have continuity. Then we can test the start side of the switch. Leave the probe on the incoming power terminal, and move the other probe to the yellow wire start terminal. Once you have it swapped over, turn the switch to the start position. It should have continuity in the start position also. If the switch fails either test, it's bad and will have to be replaced. If you need to order a part, simply go to appliancepartspros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Now we can check the drive motor. It's what powers the trash compactor through the cycle. The drive motor is a large electric motor. It has a motor start switch on one end and a shaft that drives a gear on the other. It's located in the back of the trash compactor underneath the access cover. If your trash compactor won't start, it could be that the drive motor has failed. In order to get access to the motor, you'll have to pull the compactor out from under the countertop and remove the motor access panel. Once you have access, Check to make sure the motor spins freely and it's not jammed. To test the motor, we're going to make sure the compactor is sending voltage to the motor when you turn it to start. In order to do this, we'll have to do a live voltage test. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you may want to call a technician. If you look at the wiring diagram in our example, you see that the black and white wires supply power to the motor. If the motor gets power but doesn't start, it means the motor is bad. If the motor doesn't get power, it means some other part has failed and will have to be checked. So set your meter to volts AC again. Remove the black and white wires from the motor switch and attach a probe to each one. Once you have the probes attached, temporarily turn the power back on, then go around to the control panel and turn the knob to the start position and hold it while you read the meter. When you turn it to start, the meter should read approximately 120 volts. If you get proper voltage, but the motor won't start, it'll have to be replaced. Next, we can check the door switch. It's a safety device that tells the trash compactor if the drawer is pushed all the way in. The door switch is a small switch with wire terminals and a rocker arm that gets pressed in when the drawer is closed. It's located in the drawer opening, usually in the back on the right-hand side. If the door switch has failed, the compactor will think the drawer isn't in all the way and it won't start. In order to get to the door switch, you'll have to first take the drawer out and set it aside. 
The switch is located behind the access cover on the side that needs to be removed. Once you have access to the switch, remove the wires so we can test it for continuity. Attach the test probes to the terminals where the wires were attached. Some compactors use universal switches that have three wire terminals on them, so we're going to disregard the extra terminal. Once the probes are hooked up, you should have no continuity. Then reach inside the compactor and press on the rocker arm. When it's pressed in, you should have continuity. If it fails either test, the switch is bad and will have to be replaced. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. The last thing to check is the tilt switch. It's a safety device that shuts off the power if the drawer is forced open during a cycle. The tilt switch is a small switch with a rocker arm and two wire terminals. The rocker arm is pressed in when the drawer is closed. The tilt switch is located on the front of the cabinet on the right hand side. If the trash compactor won't start, it could be that the tilt switch has failed. In order to test the switch, we'll have to open the drawer. These can be a little tricky to get out. The locking tab is on the right hand side of the switch. You can use a small screwdriver to press on it and then use a putty knife on the other side to help work it out. Once you have it out, remove the wire so we can test it for continuity. Touch a test probe to the terminals. It should have continuity. Then press in the rocker arm. It should not have continuity with the arm pressed in. If it fails either test, it'll have to be replaced. Now here are the safety tips we mentioned earlier. Trash compactors use up to 5,000 pounds of force to compact your trash, so it's important to take precautions to avoid accidents and injuries. Keep an eye on children to make sure they don't play with the compactor. Some units have locks or require keys to operate. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions and never put hazardous items in the bin. These include glass, aerosol cans, and batteries, as well as items that could damage the compactor itself like hard objects that don't compress. Never use your hands or feet to compact the waste in the unit. It's also advisable not to put any items in the bin that may decompose and create bacteria and odors since the trash sits there longer between changes. Trash compactors have many safety features that prevent them from working if something fails, so it's important to fix them right away. Following the manufacturer's recommendations will help keep your trash compactor in working order for many years to come. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now. And if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.